Once you're logged on to a fan center, you can send and receive CPDLC messages with the controller. This video describes FAN's CPDLC uplink and downlink messages as implemented on the Honeywell FMS 6.1 upgrade. For instructions on how to log on to a FAN's CPDLC center, as well as an overview of CPDLC, refer to parts 1 and 2 of this video series. A CPDLC message sent from the ground to the aircraft is called an uplink message. When an uplink message is received, the flight crew will be notified by an aural charm and an ICAST message. To view the message, access the ATC pages. When an uplink message is received, it is considered an open message until a response is sent. Any open messages will be shown immediately when the ATC page is accessed, which is why in this example, the ATC index was not shown when the ATC button was pushed. A CPDLC message is usually multiple pages long. Always review all the pages in an uplink message before sending a response. An uplink message can contain one or more message elements. A message element is a specific request. In this example, climb to and maintain flight level 450 is one message element. The message element includes a predefined element and a variable element. On the Honeywell FMS 6.1 system, predefined message elements are shown in white, while the variable element is shown in green or cyan. The variable element is set or modified by the controller. When a message is received with multiple message elements, a flight crew should only accept it if all the message elements can be complied with. This is because a flight crew can only provide a single response to a multi-element uplink message. As a result, if one of the elements cannot be complied with, the flight crew should reject the entire uplink message. Once the message is read and understood by the crew, it's time to send the response. Page two of this uplink contains the available response selections. An uplink can be accepted or rejected. If you need more time to send the response, select standby. In this case, the flight crew cannot accept the climb due to performance limitations. To reject this uplink, select Reject. The Reject Due To page allows the flight crew to provide an explanation for the rejection. The FAN CPDLC design philosophy tries to minimize the use of free text in order to avoid confusion. When available, use predefined message elements, such as Due To Performance in this example. However, if a predefined message element doesn't exist for a request to communication, use free text. In this case, we will use free text to inform the controller that we can accept a climb to flight level 400. Once the information is entered, select Verify. The Verify Response page provides a summary of the response downlink. Both pilots must verify the response prior to pushing send. Push send to send the response downlink. The uplink message is now closed and the ATC log is displayed. The ATC log can be accessed at any time and contains a log of previous CPDLC messages. It also shows the type of message. The up arrow here indicates this was an uplink. The time the message was sent, the first line of the content of the message, and the response. If a message is open, this field will say open. To access a message in the log, push the corresponding right line select key. ATC can use CPDLC to send route clearances that can be directly loaded into the FMS. These are called loadable messages. This greatly minimizes the possibility of loading errors. In this example, we have received an uplink with instructions to proceed direct to the BAGZO waypoint. Go to page 2 to accept the uplink message. Verify and send the response. Once the response is sent, an Activate prompt is displayed in the uplink. Select Activate to enter the Direct2 command into the Active Flight Plan. 
We will now show you how to send a downlink request using FANS CPDLC. Access the ATC index and select Request. The ATC request page is used to request a new altitude, speed, offset, or a flight plan modification. In this example, we'll request a new altitude of flight level 430. Once the request is keyed in, the ATC altitude request page is shown containing the altitude request. You can also provide an explanation for the request if you like. Once the request is complete, select Verify. Again, both pilots should verify the request before it is sent. Once the request is sent, the ATC request page is shown. This page shows the summary of the downlink request as well as the current status of the request. You'll be notified of an uplink when ATC sends the response to the request. Push the ATC button to access the new uplink. In this example, ATC has granted our request and instructed us to climb to and maintain flight level 430. Note that a second message element is included in the uplink. This message element instructs us to report being level at flight level 430. Since this uplink is a result of a previous request by the pilot, a prompt providing a link to the original request is shown. Just like any other uplink message, a response must be sent. Select Accept, verify the response, and send the response downlink. In this example, ATC has sent an uplink requesting our ETA at the bags away point. However, due to pilot workload, we are unable to send the requested information immediately. If you're unable to address an uplink within one minute, send a standby response. This lets ATC know that you received the uplink and need more time before addressing it. In general, standard messages should be used instead of free text. However, when a standard message element does not exist for a request or response, a pilot may elect to use free text. In our example, there is not a standard message element that can be used to send an ETA, so we'll send the information as free text. To send a free text message, access the ATC index, go to page 2, and select Free Text. Enter the free text and send the message. This video has been a brief introduction to sending and receiving FANS Datalink messages on the Honeywell FMS 6.1 system. Watch the next video for information on ADS-C.